You're obviously one of the most front-facing per people in the Echo Vox organization. You're a former athlete, you're an entertainment star, you've been in movies, and television shows, everything, really. You've been around the ringer in your life. Um, you just call me old? <laughs> uh, yes, this is great hair. <laughs> uh, it's not just for me, sports. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what does your like week to week in Equivox look like? What are, what are your responsibilities versus the responsibility of the other owners, your managers, and everything? Where what is that like for you? Well, it it has evolved uh, from the purchase of Gravity, like which we both came in at the same time yeah. into esports, which seems like years ago, right? Oh, yeah, um, right. You know that was uh, you know. 24-7, two-year run for me, and, and it was a sprint as esports is such warp speed, not only getting up to speed with the understanding of, of what it means to run an organization, a professional organization, but building it. And I had, uh, had a lot of help uh, around me, partners, you mentioned, you know, co-founding with me, and then also going out and trying to, you know, not only find players, but create, you know, infrastructure around them. You know, that was a 24-7 thing that I was completely immersed in. Uh, for two years, and, and that that darn near, <laughs> you know, will will almost kill you. Uh, no one should you know have to work that hard in life. But uh, when there's joy behind it, and it's and it's so exciting, you forget, and time flies by. So uh, it was at that point that you know to go to the next level, you really need to you really need to grow your organization. And and I was blessed. Uh, we were blessed uh, to have a guy like Stratus Clavos come in, yeah. uh, and he came in and has taken over the the day-to-day -day operations of, of Echo Fox, which has allowed me to really catch my breath, uh, be, be really front-facing, and when it comes to business development, uh, with our players, staying in touch with uh, you know, their rhythms and, yeah. and, and the motivations around uh, their day-to-day -day, uh, lifestyle and competing. And then just really, I, I, the last year, um, you know, my, my personal uh, life has taken more of a, uh, an expanded role in actually esports as a whole. Mm -hmm. Where I've had to to really be a uh, you know a face and a representative of the community uh, right. and, and the likes the thing, yeah, right? yeah yeah the IOC just recently with the conversation between the IOC and the esports community I had a lot of amazing uh, people from our um, from both sides in the room uh, we got to talk for two days about you know the introduction of both worlds yeah. so that they each got to know you know a little bit more about each other and then the conversation obviously uh, turned to you know is there a place for these two entities to come together right. and I don't know if we've we, we haven't solved that yet I don't think that's anything you can solve rather quickly uh, it was like a first date you know right. everyone got to really talk about what it meant to to move in esports the different you know the different uh, competitions that uh, we have the different publishers the different yeah. uh, uh, platforms that you know, really cover us media wise and the IOC obviously is a huge governing body of, of, of all you know many different sports and many different federations so I think we came away with a, a really good understanding of, of each other and a commitment to continuing the conversation do you think that the Olympics is something that esports needs or do you think that even if it's not included in the Olympics one day that we're going to keep on the same trajectory of just going yeah. on this community yeah 100 percent I think we made that, uh, I say we, I mean, obviously I come from both sides of the, the yeah. track, right? Traditional sports and esports. I, I no longer really uh, point to a difference in either, uh, you know, community. I just think competition is competition, right? And the, the values of, uh, are, are equally shared. We landed on that, right? The, you know, friendship, respect, and excellence is something that both communities share so uh, we united around that and now and now as we started to understand both worlds we realized to layer the two on top of each other would be quite the undertaking right right because when you really look at both worlds East, the esports world is as vast as the Olympic yeah, it is. space. And a lot of people don't know that. So uh, esports is going to continue to grow at, at the pace it's growing with or without the Olympics. The Olympics are going to continue to do what they do. I think it's just a way to really commonly come around what's most important. And that is the youth. That is the next generation of competitors. That is the love for competition and the shared values of how do we bring this shared love for competition to an audience that really just loves competing and loves video games. And, and the IOC, I think, got a good education on what it means uh, from the publisher side, from the, you know, the streaming platform side, from the, from the player side, all the different um, you know, silos that make esports go, all the different individuals that make it go. They got to understand why we stand on over here as an esport community and go, well, it's nice to meet you, but we don't need you.
Yeah. Right? And that is important for them to understand. But at the same time, we stood over here from the esports community and look at the IOC and go, wow, they have some really amazing shared values that we have. They really, they're really reaching out almost in an olive branch Very type of way. Yeah. Very interested. And it's upon us to tell them what we stand for and what we won't stand for. Yeah. And that we're not here, you know, hat in hand going, please accept us. We don't necessarily yeah. need accept to be accepted. We are our own thing. So I think out of that understanding, you can move forward. Uh, right. Neither one is greater than the other. Neither one really needs each other. But maybe there's some amazing things we can do together. And I don't know if that looks like our own eSports Olympics that has nothing to do with the yeah. IOC or if there's some partnership there. We'll see. So you mentioned some of the partners you've worked with. I remember it was a big deal when uh, you started out with a meet in, in your original group, and then you welcomed Jace, and I remember that was a big deal yeah. for you guys. You welcomed Stratton, who's obviously yeah. a former owner of the San Jose Sharks. And now like your cap table is very wide. You have people like Kevin Durant, you have the New York Yankees, and the St. Louis Cardinals. You just have, like, it's a really good hodgepodge of a lot of different investors <laughs> yeah. from traditional sports. What has it been like recruiting those people, and what has it been like working with those people? Well, it's, you know, you, you've got great, a great memory of the history. I mean, it did start off, Amit and myself, I mean, <laughs> just, you know, really digging into the gravity purchase, and, and, and Khalid Jones was a part of that as well. I mean, it, this was the original guys really up at Amit's house in the hills, like just yeah. really getting to the nuts and bolts of how do we, how do we enter esports responsibly? How do we enter it, enter, enter it respectfully? How do we discover what it means to run an organization? I'd been a player. That didn't mean I knew how to run an organization. Yeah. I think a lot and of people don't understand that. No. I mean, you, just because you played in the NBA doesn't mean you can run an NBA franchise. Just because you played video games and loved them and competed in them doesn't mean you can run an eSports franchise. And I think that's the most important lesson for anyone out there that think, is thinking about getting in. It is a business. It is a full-fledged business with a lot of, of responsibility and commitment. Uh, and so once we, you know, we kind of garnered that understanding, Jace being a friend of mine, it really was a huge part of my life for ten, the last 10 years when it came to my, just my understanding of, of Twin Galaxies and, and eSports and world records and, and uh, the players and, what, and, and how they'd evolved to, you know, scholarships and, and competing and being sponsored and, and having a life as a pro was just a complete education that, you know, Jace and I really talked about for really like three years. Wow, we played a lot of video games against yeah. each other, right? <laughs> uh, but then that brought us to uh, the understanding that the, how vast the esport landscape was, right. right? We were in League of Legends, but there was Call of Duty, there was CSGO, so there was a fight, there was so much. And that goes back to the IOC point, right? Like, the esports itself has enough leagues and events and interests it's to a fill catch-all it. term, it's right? It's a catch-all term, but it's not catching everything when it comes right. to the person, the layman out there that doesn't know it. Right. They hear esports and maybe there's probably millions of people out there that just think it's Fortnite one thing. or League yeah. of Legends. I mean, I encounter this all the time, right? People like, to me, esports means sports. It's it just like sports encounters basketball right. and football and they're all together. It's Esports is the same thing. It's it, League of Legends, it's, just, it's Overwatch, it's, it's everything. All, and when you drill down into the... The, the nuances and the specifics and you start to educate yourself, you start to see that under sports or esports, there's the NBA, there's the NFL, right. there's Major League Baseball, there's, and there's FIBA. Like under esports, there's League of Legends and Overwatch and Fortnite. You have all of these games and, you know, and Gears of War. You have the same behemoths, silos of business that you find in traditional sports, yeah. but people just hear esports and they think, oh, this think is, it's, it's this little niche thing that's popping up <laughs> somewhere in the world that maybe I've heard about and I should look, maybe look over there and see what it is. No, it is, it is a tight, I always say it's a tidal wave that has hit the shores of traditional sports and mainstream America and the world, and it is a tidal wave. It is not this little wave right. you came in on a surfboard. So people are discovering it for the first time. So, so as I was sharing, when I... When I, you know, as it started to grow, Jace was an example of someone I wanted to be closer to Echo Fox. I wanted to be closer to the world of esports because I knew he would have an impact on it in a positive way because he works and cares mostly and first and foremost about the player and he cares about the integrity of, of, of the records and, and, and the competitions and that's where he's so immersed in the Twin Galaxy side of things which is that governing body of all world records for video games and, and that I love to see him uh, immersed in now but then Stratton. Stratton came from traditional sports San Jose Sharks but Stratton also ran a big business at Verisign. Tech, yeah. He came from tech so he would understand how technology is changing 
uh, an evolving esports and evolving, you know, where we can go, where we can all go together. So, you know, the, the, you know that really has built out the infrastructure of us in terms of our, you know, our team pushing forward. Uh, and then, as always, when you look at wh what has happened the last three years, as you've reported, like, so, so you know, uh, uh, quickly at times about uh, the people that are coming in and, and, and having the interest. It's every single week, man. Every, every <laughs> single week. And so we, we got a lot of incoming calls, and we were very selective and, and, and really, and I have to give Stratton the credit, he was very, he had a vision for who he wanted to bring into our organization. And then you saw the Yankees, and you saw the Cardinals, and you saw, you know, the Disney family, and Kevin Garnett, and you, like, even the, the Garnett, that's my era, right? Kevin Durant. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Garnett, you can come in too. <laughs> but, you know, we were very, like, we were very adamant about building a team where, where, where they understood the responsibility of being a teammate, uh, bringing their expertise and, and their network and, their, and the, their bandwidth to, the, to, to grow the entire industry, not right. just like, like we, we feel like we have a responsibility to, to each other, to other people that are really just kind of coming in and trying to understand this, that we bring, that we connect ourselves to the right people, right. That, that really are going to respect what's here already who has built this before us, whether it's the publishers or it's guys like, I always say guys like the TSMs and the CLGs and the, and, and the cloud, now all those guys that were there when I showed up. Right. Like, you know, all the young players that are now, like I met Carlos from G2 in, 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 you know, at the IOC event. Love meeting the European owners and love understanding yeah. that these are players like, like 100 Thieves, right? Eight Shot comes in yep. and, and brings his community and, and builds a whole new brand of 100 Thieves. Like, these are all stories that, I just love. I love because yeah. they're the they're the people they're the esports guys that were players and foundations yep. to this that people don't really get to hear their stories. They see my big head and they go, "Oh, I know him. Yeah. He's esports." <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Like, I am esports because they were esports. Right. Because they built they this. It up and you they joined, built joined it, the and I came in and I play a role. So, you know, those stories need to be told, and I try to tell them as, men, as much as I can because those are the guys that really I enjoy spending time with now in my life because yeah. they're, the, they're my Bob Crafts and, and you know, yeah, and they're, they're, they're my peers, and, and they're the guys that, that are going to, we're all going to help take this to the next, you know, the next level. So I remember when you and Amit and uh, Khalid, or Khaled, uh, rather, really uh, bought Echo Fox. It was approximately a million dollars, and that was mind-blowing to me. That, that, that was, back then, that was a lot of money yeah, in esports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now companies like Echo Fox, Cloud9, Immortals, TSM, they're worth over $200 million it's with all crazy. their assets. It's really, it's, you're raising money that's like, you know, 30 million here, and it's like, oh, that's like, you know, an eighth of your company, a tenth of your company, it's not, <laughs> nothing. From the financial and business side, what do you think of the evolution and how we've gone from where a million dollars is a lot to now these companies are worth you know a quarter billion yeah. in in a really short amount of time? Yeah, three as years. Well. But I, I got to credit uh, really in my case, like for us, it's been the you know Amits and the Strattons and the Jaces and the Khalid, like and you know Ali and like people that that really came from big business. Yeah. And really took a leap of faith in a vision that you know. I had along with Jason and, 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 the, and the things I felt were, were there for, you know, for growth potential and really brought structure, brought expertise uh, to our organization. And now as I've watched, you know, Jack and Andy and, and Steve and, and other guys that are close to me in the NA, I've watched them take on partners that are great business minds and, 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 have, and have supported them in their visions. And so, look, I mean, the reason this has taken on this, this you know, warp speed when it comes to the multiples of these organizations growing, first, it's because esports is, was already here. People are just discovering it, but it's global. The technology has unlocked uh, our brands to be seen in China and, you know, in Europe. Anyway, I mean, people that know the Echo Fox brand globally, it just is mind boggling to me in the short amount of short span of time that we've been a brand and out uh, and, and out here in business. But man, it's just it's continued to grow. And, and really, the people that have gotten in three years ago, they kind of got in defensively. They didn't know, yeah. OK, I don't want to miss the boat. And then they and then three years later, people are realizing I kind of missed the boat a little bit. Yeah. And they're just really getting in because they see where this is going. And, and it's really it's it's rather quickly because of technology, I say, and the awareness of, 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 of 
the fan base's ability to compete anywhere in the world globally, it's unlocked these brands, these brands to the level that it's, it's gotten to you see right now. $200 million is, is, is an eSport brand that's been around for four years, five yeah. years. So I got two quick ones for you. You and some of your partners went to the Overwatch League Finals last week. You had to experience that. You said it was the first time you've ever been to an Overwatch event. Um, as the reporter, I would say it's probably very unlikely that Echo Fox gets in the Overwatch League this year. Mm -hmm. Is that would you say that's correct? Well, they Echo Fox, I think, as a brand, would not be able to uh, house the ownership house group. The would, ownership group. Would Vision yeah. Venture Partners get right, into right. Overwatch League um, this year? Look, I mean, it's it's we have not only followed the growth of the league. Um, a lot of our focus last year was really solidifying our presence in league because it's how we entered. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a real strong focus on completing that franchising process. So, you know, some teams, uh, Optic, uh, Jack, C9, they were able to pull off both. Yeah. Um, we were still hard. too young. Jack had, I think, had more structure and more stability uh, at that point, which was, and so did Optic. You know, so you, they were able to do that. But as you see, like, you know, that's the London Spitfire. You know, so that right. our brand could not live there. Our ownership group, 100%, is always uh, definitely uh, looking for those conversations because what they've established, I go back to sitting in the room with Mike and Frank and these guys back when they were forming the league and, and they were just testing their hypothesis about what they were building against someone that came from traditional sports. Uh, and it's been Nate Nanzer. It's been amazing to see what they've done. I went to go. I just went to go see it. You know, just yeah. to be in the arena and to feel, feel, you know, feel their expression as a league and, and their energy and the fan base was epic and Barclays was epic and and uh, and I only wish that you know the Philly Fusion uh, and, and had been able to put up a little more of a fight and it had gone on for another couple you know a couple hours. Uh, but my my son. His roommate works for the Philly Fusion, so he mm. got to see his roommate, uh, and uh, we got to, he got to root for his roommate's team, and I got to watch uh, with, uh, with Mike uh, and their staff, you know, watch their first championship go off. So congratulations to Overwatch, congratulations to, uh, you know, to the London Spitfire for being the first ever, you know, champion.